If you're starting a new business or just looking to take the one you have a little bit more seriously, it's super easy to start wasting a bunch of time and not see any real growth or profit just by making a few small mistakes. In this video, I'm gonna share with you all the things that I wish I knew when I had first started my print on demand business that either I didn't implement until later or that just took me a really, really long time to figure out so that you can really crush your print on demand business this coming year. The first thing that I wish that I knew about when I first got started is how vital a research tool is going to be in helping you find niches that are actually going to make you money in print on demand. When you're just started, you haven't made a lot of profit. It's really tempting to want to do everything on your own so you're not having to spend any extra money at all. But what I found is that when I do invest in a service that maybe costs somewhere around eight and ten dollars a month, that return on investment was able to help me sell many, many more designs and shirts every single month, definitely paying for itself in far more. I wasted so much time searching through niches and just looking at what has been selling, what has trending, when I could have been using a tool like Merchant Former or something similar that is actually going to sift through all that data for you and present it in a way that you can understand and not have to wait hours and hours looking for these low competition, high demand niches that people want to buy. My biggest piece of advice to new print on demand sellers is don't wait on getting some research tool. There's quite a few out there. I know Pretty Merch has a great one as well as Merch Informer. Merch Informer has been the one that I've been loving and using for over a couple of years, so I definitely recommend it. And I do have an affiliate link with them. You don't need to use that at all, but if you do choose to, it does help my channel out. The next thing that I wish I had learned even sooner when I got started in print on demand is how important it is to not put all of your eggs in one print on demand basket. It's a big learning curve to be able to figure out what is going to sell in print on demand, what are the mechanics of this new site. So it's really tempting to just spend all of your time honing into just one print on demand platform like Amazon or Etsy because they do take a lot of time. But what I do see is that people who really want to make this into a full-time income with a lot of profit really fast are going to be starting on three to four print on demand platforms and taking those all very seriously. By spreading yourself out onto more platforms, you have more opportunities to put your products in front of more eyes. Each different site has a different type of customer that likes to shop there who is looking at different things. So you are really just setting yourself up for success when you put your products on more than just one site. While a few hundred dollars does not sound like too much when you are trying to make this into a business, if you just made a few hundred dollars from several different sites, that could be a significant amount of money in a month. My top sites that I like to sell print on demand are definitely Merch by Amazon, Etsy, Redbubble, and TeePublic. Even recently, I've been looking more into Zazzle and I think they're starting to be a great option too. I would say three to four print on demand sites, putting all your products on them is definitely going to be the way to go and how you're gonna start seeing profit even sooner in your business. The next thing that I wish I had found out sooner in print on demand is how important it is to not follow everyone else. So many people in print on demand are just looking for the newest and biggest trend that has all of a sudden exploded. But the reality of that is sometimes by the time you are finding out about that trend, there are already so many competitors in that niche that you don't really have a chance to stand out. If you are constantly just looking for other people to tell you what are the best niches to target or see what is working well for other people, you're always going to be just one step behind. I think it is super important for you not to exactly follow what is trending, what is the biggest thing right now, but spend the time finding your own niches. The way that I had success early on was through looking for those low competition, high traffic niches that are not going to sell you hundreds and hundreds every single day, but get you those consistent sales because there is traffic looking for those. These could be things like a more lesser known hobby, a more lesser known sport, a very particular group of people. All of those are more specific niches that aren't gonna have as much competition as say maybe targeting something like nurses or teachers or the newest trend out there. Really spending the time using a tool like Merch Informer to find those really low competition niches that still have people looking for them regularly. That is definitely the way to do it. I myself have lots of videos on trends and niches here, which definitely are a good jumping off place, 
but a lot of times by the time you have watched that video, there are other people that have already looked at that niche and are making hundreds of designs for that. Or on these Facebook groups where people are sharing niches, a lot of times those get so saturated really quickly that you need to be spending that time not following everyone else, but finding your own new trends, your own new niches. That's really where you're going to have the biggest impact, I think. The next thing that I wish I knew sooner and I wish I had invested more time in right away was knowing what exactly makes up a good print-on-demand design. Sometimes the designs that are going to look good in the real world aren't exactly going to translate well into a print-on-demand product. An example of something like this is a really trendy style shirt might have a tiny little text right here with maybe some flowers or some embroidery, but if you try to recreate that and sell that on a print-on-demand product, it's not going to translate the same way because your image is going to be so small that people don't even know what you're looking at. Print-on-demand designs that take up almost the whole text area is going to be great. And there are different styles that work super well for print-on-demand. I find that a big graphic with either one line of text at the bottom or a line above and below do really well. There are certain color schemes that do super well. An example of one of those is the retro sunset color scheme that you see a lot of people using. I would be spending a lot of time when I first got started looking at what are some of those designs that are selling really well and I will be watching tutorials of how to use the design software that I am. So if you're designing on Canva, definitely look at what makes a good Canva design. There are hundreds of those types of videos on YouTube so you will not have any lack of information there but a lot of times we think that what we like is going to look good, it's going to do well, but if it's, this is your first time designing t-shirts, there can be a bit of a learning curve of what makes up a good design, even just how to lay out your shirts, how to format them. So definitely don't feel bad about having to take a little bit of time to learn how to make a good design. And to piggyback right off of that last one, the next thing that I wish I had known sooner is that it's okay to invest some money in getting pre-made graphics. I think a lot of us, again, we don't like to spend a lot of money right up front, but if you are not an artist or already a graphic designer, it's sometimes really hard to create your own graphics. And there aren't always a ton of free options that are going to be super great. So thankfully, there's a lot of different services that you can use that have a plethora of different graphics. So you can get a Canva Pro membership, you can get a membership to Creative Fabrica, you can even subscribe to something like All Sunsets or All American Graphics, and those are going to have some really great pre-made graphics that you can use on your designs so you don't have to waste a lot of time coming up with those yourself or spending hours and hours just trying to find any good free graphics because a lot of times there are just not a lot out there in the niches that you want to be targeting. So I spend so much time getting a subscription to something that's going to give me these really great graphics that I can use at any time that have a lot more of these specific uncommon niches in them. Once again, something like this, even though it's an upfront cost or a monthly cost, if you can just get a few more extra designs that are going to sell that month because of this service, it's already paid for itself. So definitely something worth looking into. I use quite a few because all of them offer a few different types of elements, but definitely my favorites would be all sunsets and getting Canva Pro membership. Both of those just have a ton of tools for you to use. So I think that is great for a beginner print on demand seller or a more experienced one too. The next thing that I wish I had started doing sooner might sound like it goes a little bit against one of my previous pieces of advice, but that is don't be afraid to compete in more saturated niches if you're willing to do the work to bring your own traffic to your products. When I first got started, there were definitely so many money-making niches that I stayed away from completely just because I felt they were too competitive and too saturated, which was true. These are definitely things like the teacher niche, the mom niche, something like a breast cancer niche, all of those have hundreds of thousands of designs in them. And so it's really scary to try and be able to find a design that's going to compete well. But what I learned later is that if you can spend the time 
and actually bring your own traffic to some of these listings, that is really going to make a big difference in how those products get ranked and even help a lot of them start showing up on those first or second pages if you can bring the first few sales to your listing. I wish I had started sooner making more Facebook groups for different niches that I wanted to compete in. I wish I had made more Instagram pages to promote brands that I was creating and print on demand. And while this is a lot more work, there definitely is a big payout if you can break into one of those more saturated niches. So if this is a route that you're thinking about taking, this is definitely a great way to go. This is kind of how I actually broke out of tier 10 and merged my Amazon is by creating an Instagram page in a more competitive niche, but I established myself as kind of a brand and only made products in that more competitive niche, but I drove my own traffic to Amazon through Instagram. I have a video all about how I did that that you can take a look at, but this is definitely something to think about that you are able to drive your own traffic through social media. And that is a tool that a lot of people just overlook in print on demand. The next thing that I wish I had learned more about sooner is knowing the rules about print on demand. If you know anything about print on demand, you've probably heard the words trademark and copyright thrown out a ton, but there are also a lot more more subtler rules in selling print on demand products. So I think it is very important for you to familiarize yourself with all of the content policies on the sites that you're going to be selling on and for you to be aware of trademarks and have a tool to be able to trademark check. My favorite is just the free trademark electronic search system that you can just plug in a phrase and it's going to tell you if there is a live trademark for that. So definitely that is a step that I would not be skipping is looking for if your phrase is trademarked and I would definitely be taking a look at all of the content policies because some of them are things that you wouldn't even think about. Like you couldn't use the word glitter or sparkly in a description. So you would never know that if you didn't read these content policies, but small mistakes can lead to your account getting terminated. And you don't want that to happen because one, it can be a big time waster trying to get your account back or reapply. And two, with some of these sites, once you are banned, you are off the platform for good and you can never make a new account. So you definitely don't want that to happen. I do have an entire video where I lay out some of the biggest mistakes leading to termination. So definitely give that a watch if you have not already but familiarize yourself with those rules of print on demand. The next thing that I wish I would have been doing in my print on demand business from the beginning is uploading more frequently. Now this doesn't necessarily mean uploading more while that never hurts. I mean uploading every single day and not missing days or waiting for when I have a lot of time on the weekend. Because this is a side hustle for a lot of people and we're working full-time jobs in addition to this, it is very tempting to save all of your work on your side hustle for when you have a big chunk of free time. But I've seen people have a lot more success when they can dedicate just a small amount of time every single day to uploading their products. Not only will this help you not miss out on new trends and niches that emerge if you're waiting until the weekend, you might have completely missed something that happened on Monday. It also builds up that consistency that is going to help you build a long-term business and sites like Etsy and Merch by Amazon seem to favor active accounts. I can tell you that when I have taken stretches where I haven't been uploading, my sales definitely suffer. And then when I do consistently upload new designs every single day, my sales continue to increase. So that is definitely something to keep in mind. My goal is to always put about five to 10 new designs on my different accounts every single day. But if that's something that you don't think you'll be able to achieve, even just committing to posting one new or two new designs every single day is going to really, really help you in scaling this business. The next thing that I wish I had done when I first got started with my print on demand business is not been afraid to advertise and learn about advertising much sooner. A lot of times I think we make this advertising on Etsy or Amazon into this really gigantic, scary thing. But the reality is you just have to spend a little time learning how the advertising works and experimenting a little bit yourself to see what is going to get you results. I will say it's very easy if you don't know anything about advertising to just 
throw a bunch of money at the advertising account and Amazon or Etsy, they will spend all that money that you give them without maybe giving you the results that you want. But there are a plethora of videos and guides even here on YouTube about how advertising works on all of those different platforms. But a lot of times it just comes down to what is going to work for your specific product that you're advertising. So my advice would definitely be to start with your bids super low. A lot of times you'll see that when you just plug in stuff to an automatic campaign, they are gonna default your bids to being really high, like 75 cents or even more. But I would bring that down to less than 30 cents for sure. A lot of my bids, I start around 20 cents and just see how that works. If I am getting clicks and traction, I'll probably keep it around there. If nothing's happening, I might try and increase it a little bit and just play around with it a bit. And then I just put my limit at a dollar a day when I am first getting started with a campaign. And you could say anywhere from 50 cents to a dollar just while you're figuring out how things work. It's really good to keep the amount that you're gonna pay for advertising low. As you tweak your different campaigns and find that they're working, you definitely can increase that and see more profits. But I, really wasted a lot of time not doing advertising at all because I was scared about wasting all of my money on it. If you're really just doing a dollar or two a day, even if you aren't seeing the results, you're eventually gonna crack what works for your specific product and you'll start making profit. Don't be afraid to spend time researching and learning about how advertising works on your specific platform because it can really generate you a lot of extra profit that you wouldn't have had otherwise. The next thing that I wish I had known sooner and my big piece of advice for print on demand sellers is don't be afraid to make things that you like to. I will say that most of my print on demand products and niches are in areas that I have no interest in with designs that don't really suit my personality or style. It's really important to remember that in print on demand, you are not necessarily your ideal client, but every once in a while, I will have an idea, my creativity will just spark, and I really will want to create something that either I think is maybe gonna do well that I haven't seen anywhere else, or that I just think looks really good that I can't get the idea out of my head and I want to make it into a product. When that creativity does spark, don't be afraid to stop what you're doing and work on what you really want to work on. It's super easy in this business to take all of the fun out of it, to make it really rote and monotonous, just researching and finding those low competition niches that you don't have any interest in, but we need to remember to keep the fun and print on demand. So when creativity sparks, definitely take advantage of that and there have been a few times where I've had products that I just came up with out of nowhere. I put them on a design. I thought it looked really good and it ended up selling super well for me too. But there's also been other times where I thought something was super amazing that this was going to be the greatest new trend and it really didn't sell anything. Don't let that discourage you. Don't forget that this is a business that you can have fun into. It's really easy to get really burnt out if you're just doing things that you don't care about at all. So take time to pursue those projects that you're a little bit more passionate about as well. I also find that a lot of times when my friends or family hear about this business that I have where I sell t-shirts and different products, the biggest thing they always ask is, oh, let me see what you sell. I wanna see some of your designs. And with a lot of my niches and designs, they're not really things that I care about or niches that I'm interested in, so I don't always wanna show them. But if you have a few of these products that you've published that you're super proud of and areas that you're interested in, those are always great ones that I can pull up and tell them, oh yeah, look, these are some of the designs that I've made. That's just another fun reason that you can also make some of these products that you love and you're interested in too. Print on demand is constantly evolving and changing, so it's really easy to just completely miss out on what the next big thing is going to be. So I've actually put together an entire video for those of you looking to really get a jump start on the new year with some of the trends and niches that I think are going to be huge this year so you can get a head start on creating some great designs and scaling your business for the new year. So definitely check that out. I think it's going to give you some great ideas. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video.